you open us unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, his truth endure to all generations. I thank you for the reading of the word of God. This time we have a prayer. Gracious and almighty God, we do thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity, Heavenly Father, to approach your throne, Lord. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to either touch our bodies, Heavenly Father, Lord, this morning, Heavenly Father. Give us a mind to be able to say yes to your will, Lord, and let your will be done in our lives, Father. Yes, Lord. Lord, we do thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you already have done for us, Heavenly Father. And we magnify your name, Father. Yes. Realizing, Heavenly Father, without you, Heavenly Father, we can't do nothing, Lord. Yes, Lord. But Lord, we ask you, Father, to come in the building this morning, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Give us a mind, Heavenly Father, to be able to say yes to your will, Lord. Yes, Lord. And Lord, let your will be done in our lives, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Lord, continue, Heavenly Father, to bless, Heavenly Father, sick and the shut in, Heavenly Father, in a special manner, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, remember the bereaved family, Lord Jesus. Yes, yes. Touch their bodies, Heavenly Father, yes. comfort them, Lord, right now, Lord. Remember, Heavenly Father, the trouble of this world, Heavenly Father. Yes, yes. We, Heavenly Father, we ask you to bring peace, Heavenly Father. Yes. Oh, Lord, in this world, yes, Heavenly yes, Father. Lord, yes. Give us peace of mind, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Help us be able to hold on and hold out, Heavenly Father. Yes, in your mighty name, Father. Yes, Lord. And Lord, we ask you, Heavenly Father, continue, Heavenly Father, to bless the city grow in a special manner, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give us a mind, Heavenly Father, you may say yes to your will, Lord. Yes. Whatever your will is, Heavenly Father, Lord, let your will be done in our lives, Heavenly Father. Yes. Continue, Heavenly Father, ever bless us, Heavenly Father, in your mighty name, Jesus, for your sake, Lord. Amen. 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 Praise Him.
that there should be no room we never should receive it. And now we're going to have Brother Mike to come down, and I'm going to ask you about to stand and follow Brother Ursha in the wheel.
we begin to pray and fast yes, yes. for her, she went through chemo. She lost her hair. She had to be taken out of school. But God. And they kept saying, why, 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 why? Why such a four-year-old have to go through this? But it was for a reason. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. To draw her mother to Christ. She already knew about God, but guess what? It will make her believe even more and trust God even more when God gives her readmission. Yes, yes. And when they tell her that she's cancer free, she kept going in and out of hospital, in and out of hospital, and in and out. And her mom had to take off from work and, you know, and I, but I told her there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And they said it was going to last a long time, the chemo and all that. But guess what? I think in six months, they had stopped the chemo because she was cancer free. At the age of five, she was cancer free. You know? Because she, you know, she got to go get tested and go to the doctor once a month or whatever she had to do. And they said, I don't know, it doesn't look good from the tests that they're taking. They started to get weary. Yes, yes. And I said, Don't get weary. I said, Because you trust God. Yeah, Lord. I said, So when she goes back to the hospital, yes, yes. it's not going to be what you think it is. Yes, and it wasn't she had caught COVID and she had got an infection. But it wasn't cancer. God is able to do all things. And we thank God. We thank God. We thank God. We thank God. Now we're going to ask our sister Shannon to talk about her cancer.
testimony of your mom as a child, your mother, mother going through cancer. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. I believe it was around two about well first giving out a guide to yeah. my pastor Ken West to our mother Wilson to all the Saint Cedar Grove cornerstone to all to whom honors do. Um, I think I believe I remember it was around maybe 2005 2006. Um, my mom well she didn't tell me but I believe she told Angel first because she said she didn't want to worry all the children and so what it was is uh, they said the doctor said that she had cancer. But they needed to go inside to see, you know, how severe it was. It was, uh, I believe, the uterine cancer. And so, um, thank God, <coughs> when they went inside, it wasn't as bad as it as they uh, assumed it would be. So mm -hmm. I just thank God for um, taking her through that surgery. And she's been cancer-free for, it's been a while now. I, I just thank God for his yeah. Yeah. miraculous healing blessings. Hallelujah. She's still going. Hallelujah. Healing blessings. Thank you. Yeah. Is there a doctor in the house? Hallelujah. You know you go to the hospital to see the doctor. Yes. Yes. But I found out that the church is a hospital. Hallelujah. And I come to see the doctor. Hallelujah. That can take
but I did not lose a drop of hair. Amen. I had no problem with it had been. And it, I mean, it really, really got thick and grew. And, and that was very unusual yeah. for that. The only problem I had was my hands turned black, my feet turned black, and my tongue turned black. But the, other than that, I didn't think I was going to be throwing up and all of that. I had none of that. Hallelujah. They gave me pills for vomiting and all of that. But none of that happened to me. And God was just so merciful to me that I was able to so get screamed for whatever, everything, and get screamed. I had no idea that I had any kind of cancer. Because I, I felt good. I didn't feel anything. And I was so I had bled some I don't know where I was bleeding, but they told me it was internal bleeding. And uh, that I had bled so much I was severely anemic. And they had called me, uh, I think right before right as soon as I got home and said, uh, you're very anemic. And they had to be on my uh, blood bag up. But uh, she said, we usually send you straight to an emergency room when you this anemic. And then she said, but you just saw the doctor. And they didn't seem to think, you know, that if it wasn't for those tests, they wouldn't have known anything was Amen. wrong with you. Amen. And I had my surgery. And while I was in the hospital, the pandemic was beginning to start. And uh, somehow my knee to, in surgery swelled up really big. I couldn't move it. So they were telling me, we're going to have to send you to a nursing home. And I was like, I don't want to go to a nursing home. So they said, okay, we're going to call um, uh, orthopedic doctor in. So he drained my knee, and somehow fluid had built up in my knee. And I, the therapist came, and he said, we're going to see if you can walk down the hall. I said, okay. So I walked down the hall with him with the help of a walker because my knee was still hurting. He said, you know what? Don't go to the nursing home. He said, you go home. Hallelujah. in the nursing home because they weren't letting you out when once you got in there people were getting the COVID in there but I thank God I was able to go home Amen. and recover and I'm so glad I had no side effects from any other stuff I just thank the Almighty except I had a little neuropathy in my feet I didn't take long to heal I went back for my checkup mm -hmm. and the doctor walked in the room and walked back out and he said I'm supposed to see Ms. Wallace and the nurse said, that is Miss Wallace. No, he came back in the room and he said, you don't look like you had nothing done to me. I was like, oh, I said, well, thank you. He said, you're looking really, really good. He said, and you're healing really, really well. And I just thank the Almighty for his goodness.
18, no, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Psalm 18, division, uh, verse 2. Let me get to King James here. The Lord is my rock and my fortress. Yes. And my deliverer. As first lady was saying, personal. My God. My strength. Yes. In whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation. And my high tower. Now, my mother uh, from my understanding, uh, I was a child when she first had cancer. Uh, I heard stories how she suffered, and God brought her through. But later on, uh, I'd probably say about eight, nine years ago, uh, she was diagnosed with cancer. Uh, she didn't know that she had cancer, like a lot of people who I've heard about. Um, she was at work one day, and my, my mother was a teacher, and she loved children, and she was, you know, with the children, they went outside for, just for a break or something like that. It was early, early in the morning, and she failed. So my mother, she was kind of up in age, so she thought that, you know, well, hey, you know, I, I, you know, I tripped. Because a, a few years ago, prior, about two years ago before that, she was at, at the church, and she failed, twisted her ankle, and uh, found out that she had fractured a bone in her, in her ankle. Uh, so she thought it was the same thing. She said, well, you know, hey, you know, they, they, they called my dad. My dad called me, my brother. You know, your mom fell off the job. She hit her head, whatever. So, you know, obviously, you, know, you hit your head, automatic, you know, you start to worry. So, <clears throat> Uh, it, it took a long time for her to heal. You know how when you, when you fall, your, your older person said it takes a long time to heal when, when, you, when you fall. Uh, so she uh, was uh, she was walking different, and so my dad kept saying, "You know uh, what's going on?" She kept saying, "I just I just feel funny when I walk. I feel like I'm, I'm gonna fall." So they went. Make uh, a long story short, they went to the doctor. Uh, to check, and like some of some of the testimonies saying they couldn't find nothing. Mm -hmm. So uh, she kept getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And my mom, my mom would never miss church. And all of a sudden, she kept saying, "I, I just don't feel good. You know, I'm gonna stay home." And so with me, my anytime she was sick or whatever else, you know, I'm, I was there. Uh, and so just 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 so happened. She kept going to the hospital, and little things was happening. They kept telling me, no, this is wrong, this is wrong. So they thought that she had carpetone, you know, in her hands and whatever. So they would check her hands and whatever, and find out they said she had carpetone, but then they found out it wasn't carpetone. So they kept saying, well, you know, she's just getting weak and whatever else. Um, I guess, been in a, uh, you know how they, they, uh, she got so weak they put her in a, in a nursing home. And so me and my dad, my wife, you know, and some of the saints, we would go see her, like from the church or whatever. And one time we went to go see her, uh, one Saturday, and we couldn't find her. What would happen, we went to the nursing home, and the nursing home said that, oh, her kidneys start messing up. So they, they had her doing a, a dialysis. So they would take her, you know, you know how you get the nurse home, they, they take you out, and take you to the, they had, had a, the paramedics come, pick her up, take her, you know, to the dialysis, and then bring her back. So this one Saturday, we went to go see her at the church, and she's pulled the bed, bed back. <laughs> and so we got there, and with, with the red flag, when they said, you know, we said, okay, we're here to see Miss West. Okay, who? You no, know, Mary Elizabeth West. Uh, <laughs> so my dad, out of the <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know how you say, you say pastors, you know, they're supposed to be godly and this and that. I'll tell everybody, pastors are human. Amen. So we have feelings too. 
So when they said, well, your wife, we don't know where she is. I saw my dad as a child, you know, as a pastor, you know, get upset and, you know, you know, want to fight, fight people, whatever. But this time, you know, him hear about, you know, we can't find your wife and she's sick. He just went berserk. What do you mean? Whatever. So they started to try to try to do a trace. And they they trace him from the paramedic to the hospital. And they said, well, we don't know where she at. After about a, what, about an hour or so later, they found out that she was in the hospital. Mm. Found that by her going to back and forth for dialysis, she had two major heart attacks. Oh, my Lord. To where she said, Kim, I'm laying up in the bed. She said, and I hear them saying, we brought her back again. Wow. And so I'm like, what? And then she, she just laying in the bed. After we found out where she was at, my dad was very, very sick at that time. And so he had, uh, at that time, he had a Jesse Hartford. So going up and down the stairs was very difficult for him. So he said, well, son, you go up there and, you know, you know, tell your mom, you know, uh, see how she's doing. And they come back and let me know, but don't tell her I'm sick. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. So I go up there and see her, and then she's like, Kim, you know, I had these heart attacks and whatever, and, you know, uh, I'm just going to tell you and Ron, don't tell your daddy. So I'm like, what? Dad, tell me don't tell you, tell me don't tell your daddy. You know, so it was like a back and forth thing. Then, the, the bad news. She said, they found out that I have cancer. And I just lost it. I was trying to stay strong for my mom. And then my wife was there, thank God she was there. She, you know, she started patting my back and Kim, it's gonna be okay, whatever. She said, my mom was like, oh, it's gonna be okay, sir. And she said because she, she said, I have faith in God. Yeah, and the other thing was, prior, she had cancer before, mm -hmm. that her mom had had cancer. Her mom had had cancer to the point where, as uh, my mother was said, my mother-in-law was said that, you know how you were bleeding and whatever, my grandmother was bleeding out uh, pretty bad, and they would say, well, you know, she's bleeding so bad that, you know, she's about to die. But one of the, uh, one of the mothers of the church, the head mother, uh, from my understanding, said that what was transpiring told her, said, what God is doing, God is taking out all the old blood Hallelujah. and putting new blood. Hallelujah. So my mom had that, she said, well, if God did it for them, and he did it for me before, he's going to do it again. Yes. So, she said, but well, don't tell your dad that I have the cancer. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So I, I'm trying to like go out and be strong and not tell him, you know, and then try to keep my face strong for her to, you know, pop to sick. Because you know when when you when you're sick and you hear bad news, it, it makes you weaker. Yes. So I'm, I'm like, okay. So my wife is telling me, honey, you know how we going I'm gonna do this. Like, well, I don't I didn't have no idea. I wasn't even thinking. Blank face, blank everything. But I, you know, God gave me strength to, you know, to talk to him or whatever. And in my mind, I'm thinking, you know, you know how some of the saints, you know, my mother-in-law, how she went through. I'm expecting to see, you know, a long, you know, going to chemotherapy and this and that. But every time she did something, me and my brother was there. When she went for dialysis, okay, hey, we're gonna be there. And one thing I, I, I learned, and I try to tell every, especially males, I heard someone say, have yourself checked Amen. out. Amen. Have your, the, doctor, the doctor told me when I was sick, matter of fact, I was considered diagnosed with cancer the first time I got sick. They said, well, you got cancer, and it's severe, whatever, the big C, whatever. And, and it's, it's there's some kind of doctor saying, like, like they don't have no kind of compassion or whatever how, when they talk to you. Yeah, they hear you. They're like, you know, hey, you know, you're sick. Oh, uh, you got cancer. Like mom said, well, you know you got cancer. Okay. You know, and they they expect you to just boo and cry or whatever. But when you have God and faith, so much faith, mm -hmm. you don't think about death. Hallelujah. Like that part of the death. Mm -hmm. You you think about I know that I have faith that God is going to bring me through. Amen. It's not going to be as bad as some people say. Yeah. 
So, uh, like, like I said, with me, when I first got sick, uh, I was 40 years old. And they said I had cancer, whatever. And, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to hear that. And uh, the same Shannon was talking like 19. You know, 19 years old, 19, you just really get started. Just trying to enjoy life. That's hard to hear that now you got cancer. And then for the little bitty girl that we heard in the long time church, four or five years old, cancer. Prior to that, we had a young lady that joined our church. Her son, how old was he? Uh, race, uh, uh, he was like two years old with cancer. So it, it, cancer hits anybody. It's not about, because you know, when you were young, you think you have to be old to get cancer. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter about the age. Have yourself checked. Men, have yourself checked. We had a, one, of the, one of the members of our church move to Thailand. He was a health nut. And he would call me and whatever, and, uh, you know, like on, on the Facebook, whatever. And I got a, a message saying, Pastor, please pray. I need major prayer. And my mom like, you want to go to the church? You know what and he's telling me, I have stage four colon cancer. I'm like, huh? And stage four, you expect it, ain't no hope. But with God, there's always hope. There's hope. If you got breath in your body, there's hope. There's hope. Don't give up. Again, I don't care what the situation is. Hallelujah. You can always go to him first because he knows the answer that has to solution to every single problem. Every single problem. I was told a few years ago, maybe about four or five years ago, me and my wife was out. I got sick and had a problem with my, my kidneys. It got me a stage two kidney disease. And you know, they tell you, you know, you got to do this and do that to so you won't go to dialysis. And it, it's hard. Like I said, it's hard for a man to, to do all this healthy stuff or whatever, especially if you're not a health nut. Yeah. But even people that, 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 that go to the gym and take off, your health. I don't, care, I don't care what you do. Hmm. If it's better for you to get sick, yeah. you will get sick. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I was, you know, taking my meds, doing what I was supposed to do, it, and I went out with my wife, going shopping. I don't know, never forget. I was at JC Penney's uh -uh. in, in uh, uh, Ontario Mills. Have a nice time. I, in my mind, it's a date, you know, date day with my wife, and we're going to go shopping and go eat and whatever. And get a, I saw a card on my phone. And I, I, I knew I, I, I was going for a test, but I didn't know what the test was for. And they tell me, the doctor said, Mr. West, are you by yourself? I was like, no, with my wife. I'm like, what's going on? He said, well, you did a lot of tests or whatever, and we see that you have, uh, I think, a lump on your kidneys. I said, a lump on my kidneys? Mm -hmm. What's a lump on my kidneys? And, you know, and the way he was talking, well, it's like cancer. And I just went blank. Mm -hmm. I'm like, and now I'm trying to figure out, you, you told me that before. Amen. You thought I had cancer. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, if you don't know, don't tell me nothing. Right. <laughs> right. Cause now my whole, whole day is messed up. Yeah. And that's how it was when I was 40 years old. We think you had cancer, then it wasn't cancer. Mm -hmm. Now I'm hearing this again. But then all of a sudden I told my wife, like mom said she told pop, I told my wife, she said, Kim, it's gonna be all right. You gonna make it, you gonna get through this. Mm -hmm. It's good to have positive uh, 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 people around you. Yes. I tell, I tell the saints, stay around positive-minded people. Yes, uh, yes. Try to, and then also, if you're depressed, don't try to be by yourself. Hallelujah. Because that's what saints are talking to your mind. Yes, yes. I can flip the guy red. Talk about Jesus is my rock. Mm. He's my fortress. Yes, Lord. Anytime I have a major God issue problem that I know the doctors, lawyers, or king don't have an answer, I go to him Amen. for every Amen. single thing. I don't care how bad it is. Mm. He can fix anything. Yeah, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Sister Shannon said, both times she was pregnant, <laughs> cancer, mm -hmm. and both her children are healthy. Amen. That's favor. Amen. Yes. What we heard tonight or, or today was testimonies of blessings. And just let you know how God will take care of anybody at any time. Amen, amen. We hear from okay. four or five years old yeah. on up to 60 and 70 years old. Yes. It doesn't matter. Amen. All God wants you to do is just continue to trust him. Yes, yes. And rely on him. Mm. Don't give up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, we, we say this all the time about church. And to, but concerning with, with your health, don't give up. I don't care what news you hear. Think positive. That's Be right. strong. That's right. We just heard testimonies, but these the saints here, how they were suffering and how they had faith. Amen. And I'm not sure Sister Shannon probably was trying to figure out, what, I don't know if she had that much faith with, in God or what, but mm -hmm. she was around positive, strong-minded people, yeah. spiritual-minded people. That helped her. Continue to trust God. Continue to be the light. Continue to tell your testimony yes, for somebody yes. else. God bless you, Cedar Grove. God bless you. Just like I said, thank you for service. And I thank God for the testimonies. I've heard things that I, you know, to the Shannon, I never knew that she went through that. I said, at a young age and pregnant. But see, one thing I was told that God used her for that situation. Because he knew that she would make it. So again, we thank God for how he used all of us and keep our minds and bring us through all of our trials and tribulations. God bless you. So, I know we didn't have a speaker, but I believe in giving God the tip. Amen. Because he was the minister of this service. Amen. So, we're going to get the offering tray and we're going to get the speaker an offering. Amen. And go on and give him a tip as you would do at the restaurant to give the waiters. Go on and give him an extra tip. Amen. Because he's worth it. Then it's back into Mother okay. Wilson's hand. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. And I know everybody enjoys it.